Good morning, friends. My name is Glenn Flanagan, and I am your Monday meditation leader, reading with you, together with you, the upper room for today, Monday, February 22nd, 2021. The topic is no excuses, and we begin by reading from the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 15 to 20. I just happen to be reading from the updated New American Standard Bible, but um, any Bible will do. So beginning with verse 15, when one of those who were reclining at the table with him heard this, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But Jesus said to him, A man was giving a big dinner, and he invited many. And at the dinner hour, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I need to go out and look at it. Please consider me excused. Another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out. Please consider me excused. Another one said, I have married a wife, and for that reason, I cannot come. The word of God for the people of God. And the verse for today is also found in the book of Luke. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Our reading today was written by Kelly Desclose Estes of Virginia. When I was eight years old, my teacher told me I was a gifted writer. That was the first time someone had told me I was good at something. As a teenager, I wrote in a journal occasionally while dreaming of being published. But each time I felt a nudge from God to write something meaningful, I found other things to do. Distractions that kept me from doing what God wanted. By the time I finished high school, I had convinced myself that no one would read what I wrote. For decades, I gave God a lot of excuses. Yet, through prayer and support, I made a decision this year to follow God's leading. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells a story about a great dinner party. One by one, invitees give reasons why they cannot attend. One has a field to tend, while another has animals to care for. Haven't we all given God similar excuses? Someone may love to cook and avoids volunteering at a shelter. People skilled in business or technology decline to help with a church project that requires those skills. Imagine all that can be accomplished if we stop making excuses. When we give all that we are, we create a world that is closer to resembling what God desires for us. And our thought for the day, sharing our gifts by serving others creates a better world. In reflecting on this reading and the scripture for today, I feel that this past year, our greatest excuse was the pandemic. We were forced to quarantine. We were forced to isolate. We didn't reach out to others. We couldn't reach out to others. But so many folks finally decided that they were not going to let the pandemic win them over to a period of long-term inactivity. I marvel at the activity of the United Methodist women in Little Falls. When I read all that you have accomplished over these months of pandemic, reaching out to folks in meaningful ways, helping others through the food pantry and Kumac and so many other ways that you didn't let those folks be forgotten. I think that's what this reading tells us to do. We all have efforts and capabilities that we can put forth 
in order to help other people. It is so easy to say, because of the virus, I'm forced to take care of myself and not others, but that doesn't have to be true. Whether it's writing a letter, making a phone call, or doing other activities like the United Methodist women have done, makes a big difference in the lives of those who are hurt by this pandemic. We need to stop making excuses. I do it, we all do it. We wiggle our way out of things that we know we can accomplish because maybe we're afraid we're just not ready for that. We're just inadequate, but someone else needs to take that responsibility. But God knows our capabilities. God blessed us with certain gifts that we cannot deny. So my prayer for each one of us is that we stop making excuses and look for new ways, creative ways, meaningful ways to touch the lives of others, to change the world that we live in. And it will take effect like a ripple along a stream where one helps another and another helps another and it continues on and on, way beyond our local efforts. Today, we're going to close in prayer. Before we do, I just want to remind you that next Monday, when I join you again, is March 1st, and there will be a new upper room. So check with pastor or the church office, Make sure you have your new issue of the upper room, whether it be the large print, which I was using today. <laughs> it's very helpful for me. Or the small print. Just make sure you have that so you're ready for me next Monday. It's a pleasure to see you all and be with you all through this miracle of technology. So let us close together with this prayer. Eternal Father, Forgive us for making excuses. Continue to guide our path so that we may serve you more wholeheartedly. We focus our prayer this day, Lord, on those of us who have been less than active in employing and using the talents you have given us. We pray that you will guide us to use our God-given talents in ways that you would have us go. We thank you for this new day. We thank you for the blessing that we have to share with one another this day. Grant us that peace that passes all understanding until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You all have a great day and a great last week of February, and I'll see you again next Monday. God bless.